Hey, Emoji C here. Welcome to the show. Today, Curtis is going to make for you swordfish. Also, we'll go to his backyard and talk about cabbage leaves. Ooh, sounds good. One of my favorite places, or should I say Curtis's favorite places, is the Marin County Civic Center. Take a look at this beautiful building. East side, right across the top, then the west side, looking north towards Novato. Enjoy the show. It's Valentine night, and we're gonna make some swordfish. Um, hope you had a good Valentine's Day. Or is it Valentine? I always say it wrong. Uh, tonight I'm gonna make a little swordfish for Lisa and I. Uh, I bought this swordfish to serve at our Super Bowl gathering, and we had so much food, I just said, okay, let's, let's hang on to it. And um, I did the salmon yesterday, we did uh, ribs and chicken. So I've had this uh, beautiful swordfish steak marinating overnight. Um, salt, pepper, I've got some olive oil in there, some um, dried lemon rind that I kind of cured and, almost made, and, and made like a, a lemon salt with it. It's a bit windy out here tonight, so let's see if we can make this work. Um, I think I said last week when we were working with the um, the deep fry well, a couple of weeks ago, I'm not sure which episode you have seen. Uh, I'm going to start doing a lot of the frying outside because, hey, it's California. I'm going to start with a little olive oil in this pan. Let's see if we can get it nice and hot before we get started. And again, this uh, swordfish steak was not prepared yesterday, so we're going to do it tonight for our Valentine dinner. Um, and there was a place that's closed and it's, it breaks my heart. Spangers uh, Seafood Grotto over in Berkeley would love going there as a youngster when I first moved to, to California and I'd go to the A's games, uh, the swinging A's with um, Billy, uh, Billy Martin as the coach and Ricky Williams and all, Ricky Hendricks, Henderson, uh, the great base dealer. And the oil is getting nice and hot. And I'm going to add... Um, some some onions to this just to kind of flavor this oil and I'm going to add garlic a little later and the reason I'm going to add the onions is because remember now onions they take a while to caramelize okay so um, I'm not going to worry about them burning now this is getting nice and hot oh yeah you hear the sizzle there so I'm just going to add some diced onions in there and these onions will also um, kind of elevate the sword fish for a minute or two before it, uh, you know, starts to cook. It's like uh, like using a grill pan. Oh, look at that, that's about a, ooh, about a good inch thick. Pan is nice and hot, love that. And we're gonna cook this, like, like Chef uh, Leanna showed us down in uh, Las Vegas, the way she did that ribeye steak. Now this is a swordfish steak though, so isn't that a gorgeous piece of meat? I was worried about the flame not getting hot enough out here, the fire not getting hot enough out here with, um, with the wind. It seems like the wind has died down a bit, so we're looking good. I'm going to cook this three to four minutes on this side before turning it. And again, one of the great things, um, I shared this a few times, cooking inside or, or even um, like with electric or whatever kind of heat mechanism you're using, one of the great, easiest ways to regulate the heat is to just simply lift it off the pan. If you feel like it's cooking too fast, just lift that off the pan, right? I'm also going to make, um, when we get finished up with it, before I serve it, I'm going to make a little our garlic and butter sauce that will drizzle over the top. I'll also cook it in, and I'm going to use that variegated lemon that Rochelle gave us down in L.A. I love that. Can you see the flesh? It's almost like a pink flesh there. Beautiful. She made lemonade for us when we were down in L.A. And it was so tasty. Fresh squeezed lemonade off the tree. Now we're going to turn this over. Why? Because I'm cooking outside. And I want to just be careful. I, I don't want this side. I want to keep all the side. Now look at that. I want to get it nice and seared. Mmm. Now look at that pan, okay? To my right, your left, I've got... 
champagne that we didn't finish yesterday. It's a white wine, right? Mostly Chardonnay grape. So I'm going to use some of this beautiful, uh, I've got maybe a cup or so left. I'm gonna use that to deglaze my pan. I'm going to regulate that heat just by lifting it up. Mm, can you see that at home? I was telling you about Spangers. I used to love to go there for the, um, the swordfish. We'd stop in. Rich Pendergraf and I would stop in, and his wife, Linda, I believe her name was. Rich and I, I, we were great buddies way back in the day, and you know how sometimes just people go different directions and really miss, miss Rich. We work together at the Alpha Beta in San Rafael, California. Now that's the, um, the Whole Foods Market. Back then it was Alpha Beta. Remember, tell a friend. <laughs> oh, there's my Vanderpump. Vanderpump. Lisa got onto me because I always said Vanderpunks. She goes, no, it's Vanderpumps. Let me make sure. Yeah, yeah Vanderpumps in Las Vegas. Anyway, I uh, had to cover my bald head up out here in the, in the cold tonight. Um, again, we're going to use do the technique that Chef Leanne taught us. So I'll be adding that um, butter, and then we'll 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 just kind of turn it over. Mm, look at that! I'm going to get all sides. Oh, I just love I used to love swordfish. It's been a long time, and this this is my first time actually cooking swordfish. Wow! I just thought about that you get to see how it turns out. Mmm, beautiful cut of meat. Let me show you the other ingredients. Like I said, I've already done the salt and pepper. I've got butter there, and remember the, um, the olive oil will help to raise the smoking point of that um, butter, so I'm not really worried about burning anything. So I've got here, I've got some more onions. I've got... Um, Cilantro, some scallions, as well as some shallots, uh, not shallots, but some um, chives from my herb garden. I'll give you a tour of that again soon. Um, and I also have some rose that Mary in there. I'm, I didn't add any salt and pepper because we already have salt and pepper on the swordfish steak. Okay, I'm drinking a red wine tonight, although we're cooking with, uh, with uh, champagne. Got a Pinot Noir. I believe this came from, um, it may have been um, Domaine, Domaine uh, Chandon is where we, you know, we're, like, like so many people in, in Marin County, Northern California, we're members of a couple of different wine clubs. And, uh, you know, these are some that they don't sell in the stores. You only have to only get it when you go to the winery. Mm, is that looking good? Now we're going to add our first bit of butter right here. And just take, don't worry y'all, take your time. We're going, to, we're going to use quite a bit of butter as Chef did with the, with, the, uh, with the ribeye steak a couple of weeks ago. And the wonderful thing about being out here is that this, uh, it's, the butter does not melt because it's still cool outside. Mm. I've got a table back there. I'm going to set that down just to give us a little more room. So that's like two pads of butter there, huh? We'll let that melt. I'm going to take our time. And remember, fish does not need nearly as long to cook as uh, red meat or pork or even, and, or even chicken, any of the poultry members. Oh, that's looking good, y'all. We've got a beautiful sauce going there. So I'm going to let this cook. Make sure we got enough flame in there because, you know, um, Gonna let this cook. We'll be back in a second and see how it's coming along, okay? I love that sauce. It's looking really good. There's a gar I've got some whole garlic, cloves, more onion. There's that beautiful, very good lemon butter and our ingredients there. And there's our olive oil. 
Mmm, this smells, it is smelling so good. I went out and grabbed the thermometer just to check the, the temp on the, the, the inside there. Inside of the, of the sand, of the swordfish that is, not inside me. The butter smells so good there. Mmm, got a way to go. I'm going to flip it again. And we're going to deglaze one more, one more time. Who sings that, Cher? Lisa is a huge Cher fan. Mm. So if Cher comes to town, y'all know I'm going to be surprising her with tickets. Well, it's hard to surprise Lisa Cobb because she is the master of surprises. Mm. You see that? Isn't that beautiful? Nice color there. So let it cook. Just like cooking a steak. You don't want to undercook it. 106, 113. We're getting close. Mmm. Thing I've learned about my sweetheart is that she does not like things with fish. She does not like it on the she would much rather have it overcooked than undercooked. So bear that in mind when you're cooking for someone you love, okay? Prepare the way they want it, not the way you, you want it. Even though I am a, a chef and I play one on TV. All right, we're looking good here. We're going to go ahead and make, I'm going to deglaze one more time. And deglaze is just to loosen up all that, those juices on the, on the bottom there. Just moving that around. I'm going to add my herbs along with more butter. A lot of butter, as Chef Leanna said. Butter, butter everywhere. Mm. Let's add our herbs as well. Onions, herbs. It's gorgeous. The onions are going first. And I'm going to add some of the garlic and the herbs. I'm going to add some of that lemon juice next. We're going to just let this cook down, okay? We're going to um, melt that butter. Get it in that. There we go. Get it. Get it good. Mmm. See that? That's beautiful. My rosemary. I'm going to put a big sprig of rosemary in there. Just to flavor that up. Now, now, I'm using my ceramic pans because I thought that would be easier for the heat, for it to heat up out here. Now, I'm going to tilt this so you can see me basting. Just going to baste that over. Mm. I wish we had smell-o-vision. When are they going to come up with that so you can smell this at home? Wow, wow. Sip of red wine. Bon appetito, huh? Ooh. We are all my, oh, wow. You see that? It's gorgeous. I'm going to taste that butter sauce so bad. Let's hit it with a little bit of lemon. I'm going to flip it one more time. I've already used the share reference, so I can't do that twice, right? Oh, wow. Like I said, this is my first time preparing a swordfish steak. And I can tell you, just by the smell, this won't be my last. I think we are ready to go in and serve it up. Look at that. I'm going to keep it in the pan just to maintain our temperature. So we'll get to the table with it. And I'll slice it up. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. See you inside at the table.
Texas says it's good. I'll let you know what I think. My first time tr preparing swordfish. I love to eat it. Okay, let's go now. So, baby, you think you like it? You, mm. you say you like it? Mm -hmm. Good. You're not just saying it because you love me, right? Nope. So, not so just because it's Valentine's Day. Oh, okay, that's right. Happy Valentine's Day, lover. Um, swordfish, and I'm serving mine with asparagus. It's got a little lemon on it and that beautiful butter sauce. That's a winner. Wow, that's truly a winner, guys. Good. All right, y'all. Happy Valentine's Day. We're going to have dinner. Drink some more champagne. She's watching Super Bowl. I'm going to go watch uh, Star Trek Discovery. Peace. Spread love. <laughs> Welcome to the Cabbage Patch. <laughs> I am the Cabbage Patch Kid, Curtis Akins. Uh, last night, we made that gorgeous uh, swordfish for our Valentine dinner. And I served mine with asparagus. And Lisa, she loves broccoli. So I had some broccoli florets for her. Um, today I want to show you uh, another side dish, another vegetable that will go great with any protein. It's cabbage. Now most of the time when you buy cabbage in the market, people will buy the head of cabbage and they cut the beautiful leaves away. I want to show you these. Now this, I've got I think about a dozen and a half uh, cabbage, green and red growing. And these young tender leaves are absolutely incredible. Loaded with nutrient, iron, phosphorus, vitamins. Uh, it's got C, all of the things that those um, cruciferous vegetables have, okay? So check them out. Now, these beautiful leaves, uh, what I'm gonna do is just trim some, and we'll take them in, wash them, then um, when it calms down the yard, or should I say in the neighborhood, a lot of work going on, going on in the neighborhood, so it's a bit loud, I'm hearing um, saws and things going off, so I may wait till later in the day and we'll cook them uh, out here in the yard again. So let's trim some of these beautiful leaves up, get them cleaned up, and I'm gonna chill them down uh, so for tonight when we saute them. Now I'm gonna show you, and you always wanna use your food grade scissors when you're cutting things to eat. Look at that beautiful cabbage leaf. It looks almost like a collard green, doesn't it? It's not, it's cabbage. I'm gonna even use these stems because they cook down nicely. I'm gonna do a mixture of the green and red. I'm not gonna cut too many off of one plant because I still want that head to form. That mixture of the green and red, the flavor is going to be so nice. So I'm taking one or two from a lot of different plants. And before we go inside, I'm going to, um, I'll come get a close up so you see how the heads are starting to form inside our cabbage, okay? All right, I think we've harvested enough greens for a nice little mess of greens. And uh, we're gonna clean those up. That one I'm not gonna use. Look, it's got some spotting on it. So I'm gonna just tear that up, make it, and throw it in the mulch pile. Sauteed cabbage leaves. Okay, nice little mess of greens there, enough for Lisa and me. Good little portion size, we'll wash those. Then I'll get them ready for the saute pan. I'm gonna add some garlic, uh, some onion, and we'll see, some salt and pepper. I've relocated the camera so you could see inside the um, cabbage. You see that's starting to head up. They start, they close up like that. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, Nature is, is just incredible, you know? There's no art like Mother Nature's art. Also, when we trim those down there, um, because it does two things. One, we get to eat them, and two, you see these bottom leaves? They get a little dirt in them, 
and a lot of times that'll grow up in the head so that's a great way of kind of you know uh, making sure you have a nice clean um, head of cabbage um, no pesticide used in my garden I don't call it organic because a, that's a certification however there's no pesticide here all the dirt was um, or is organic dirt that I filled my my boxes with so it's a very clean garden and I must you know, say, Lisa, thank you so much for encouraging me to, to do raised beds. Um, I love gardening in the dirt. Uh, however, as we mature, our body starts to let us know it's time to get off your hands and knees with gardening. Those are our carrots. They're coming along nicely. Um, you know, the carrot tops, these are edible as well. And back in the early, well, mid to early, uh, 1800s ladies would wear in London would wear um, carrot leaves in their hats as a decoration. Isn't that cool? Okay, first things first, let's get our our propane in, get us fueled up. Ooh, we, we have flame. Okay, pan on. I'm gonna add some olive oil and let that heat up, and then we'll talk about the ingredients for this little saute we're doing. Um, and notice I've got, again, I'm using my ceramic pan. I just like the way that conducts out here. And I brought a lid this time to keep as much heat in that pan once we add our vegetables to it. Uh, ingredients. You saw me trim our um, cabbage or harvest our cabbage. I've got the onion, some garlic there, and a little spice blend. I've got the, the base is salt. And then I added um, garlic, uh, uh, what else? Um, onion powder. I'm trying to think... Uh, you know, again, talking about making your own seasoned blend. Okay, wow, this got hot in a hurry. So let's go ahead and get that onion ready. My little foldable colander I'm gonna put down on the side to just give us a little more room so you can see what's going on. Now I'm gonna get these onions diced and in the pan in, in a hurry. And again, I don't need anything pretty here because these, are gonna cook, these will cook down. Um, the pan should be nice and hot. See what we get. There's that sizzle, baby. Love that sizzle. Okay, now we'll start working on our um, on our cabbage. I'm going to place that in so this keeps the heat in the pan, so it's cooking from the bottom as well as the top. Also, it keeps the moisture in. Now, I'm going to show you the cabbage. What we're going to do is a little bit of a like a we're going to do a chiffonade. We're going to roll them up and then just slice them. Okay, and I didn't shake a little, shake the water off. I washed them but I left that water on so that it can, um, it uh, will cook away. It'll help keep, them, keep our cabbage from drying out. Again, just roll them and I'm gonna make little cuts. This technique is really used with basilical, with basil. And again, I'm gonna use the stems because they will cook down nicely in these, in this young cabbage leaves, okay? Everything's gonna go right in the pan. I'm gonna add the garlic towards the, after I get all the, all the uh, cabbage leaves in, okay? Again, that's a pretty big stem. Let's pull that one out. Okay, now, and I've got some water too, just in case, because we're cooking outside, it, the, the water evaporates, so I'll add a little more water to it if all that water cooks out, okay? I don't want them to dry out. Right, so we've got those herbs in there. I'm going to add a little more olive oil. I've already added a little bit of water. Let's add some olive oil. They smell so good. I'm going to do our first bit of seasoning. Just kind of sprinkle that in. And I'm going to use Lisa. No, it's this is from the left hand store. <laughs> One of those left hand spatulas. And you know I'm a righty, so. There we go. Flip it over, do a Tiger Woods and turn it upside down. There we go. Look at that color, all that beautiful color. We do not want to overcook these, okay? Nice little mess of greens, as we'd say in the South. I'm gonna place the lid back on there, get that garlic ready, okay? I've got three cloves of garlic and I'm not gonna over chop them, but just gonna kind of break them up so they release the oil and we'll put them in the pan, okay? How does that sound? 
back, back on the knife, just squish them because I want the oil. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Big chunks of onion. Now we're gonna move or move things around the pan because I want, this, I want the on, um, the garlic to hit the bottom of the pan. Mmm. Smells good out here. Rest of our seasoning. Make room for the garlic. I just pushed it back. You see what I did there? Just kind of push that back. Oh, this pan gets so hot. I love the fact that we can cook outside with the wind blowing and not worry about temp. Temp being the temperature. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna saute these up for about two to three minutes. I've got a beautiful serving dish to my left, your right, that will get out. All that goes in there. I'm gonna add just a little more of that uh, agua. Put that here, let's grab a serving bowl. There we go. I'm gonna serve them up in this bowl. I've got a fork so I can taste them. You like that? Okay, so sauteed young cabbage leaves with garlic, onions, and fresh herbs. Mmm. This looks so good. And it smells beautiful. Remember when it comes to salt and pepper, you can always add more, but once you put too much, you can't take it out. So it's always best to air with less salt than more salt, okay? Let's give it a quick little. Needs about two more minutes of cooking. Mm, the taste is already great. Okay. Let's, it's time for the big reveal. I have a fork here. Let's see what we've got. I'm gonna turn the burner off. Oh yeah, look at that. All that color that comes up in those beautiful greens. Mm. Show you that, wow. That looks nice. A little slotted spoon, or sp uh, <laughs> I shouldn't say spoon, a um, spatula, so like scooping. We'll turn those into our pan, into our bowl, serving bowl. It smells so good. You know, we eat with our nose as well as uh, our nose and eyes as well as with our taste buds. So, look good, smell good, taste good, right? Okay. Ooh wee! Fresh cabbage leaves cut, clean from the garden. Mmm. Larbell Aikens up there in heaven. I know you, you would love a bite of these. Mmm, très magnifique. Mm. Bon appétit. Wow. I think Lisa's gonna love these. Mm.